Hey there guys, I am back. I know I haven't been that very active with YouTube videos lately because I've just had so much going on in my life. But I was just sitting here chilling in my room just texting people off of my phone and I realized, hey, I think I need to do another video. So I was trying to think, you know, what could I do? I realized the shirt that I was wearing, and I realized that I recently watched a Psycho movie recently. Even though that, you know, I don't do my horror reviews until October, but I thought, hey, why don't I at least give my subscribers something? I'm not going to review the original Psycho because I already reviewed it, but I have, you know... Looking back on that review, I could have done better. I'll re I'll re review that some other time. I haven't watched Psycho three or four in years. I'm not gonna bother with with rewatching the remake again. <sighs> Waste of time. And the Bates Mo and the in the more recent Bates Motel TV series, I have not seen. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna review for the first time on my channel, Psycho 2. This came out in 1983, about 22 years after the original Psycho. 22, 20, 23 years, somewhere around there. Now, at first, I thought that the reason why they they did Psycho 2 is because Alfred Hitchcock died in 1980 or 1981. So I thought that this was their way of capitalizing on Alfred Hitchcock's death. Now I thought, you know, that's kind of screwed up. But here's the real reason why they they made Psycho 2. So in case of you didn't know, the original Psycho movie by Alfred Hitchcock was based off of a novel by Robert Block, I believe his name is. So then, during the slasher craze of the 1980s, Robert Block r returned to write a sequel to the original Psycho novel. And in, in the sequel, he was making fun of slasher movies and all that, poking fun at them. It was basically like his commentary on them. Well, Hollywood didn't really like that. So, this is their response back. Now, I have to admit, that's a much better reason than that first reason that I thought. So, interesting note. Originally, Anthony Perkins was not going to return. Originally, they are going to replace him with Christopher Walken. Okay. It wouldn't have been the same. Just no. But as soon as he found that out, he, he decided, you know, I better return. And Anthony Perkins just... He nails it. His, his performance alone is... I say that... I say that it is up there with the original. Psycho 3, I remember being really, really bland and forgettable. 4, I vaguely, vaguely remember. I'm going to have to rewatch those ones, but... Yeah, um... So, since that this is not directed by Al Al Alfred Hitchcock again, you would think that that... You would think that that would be a bad thing. For the sequel. But actually. The guy who they got. To direct it. Uh, Richard Franklin. I believe that he actually personally knew Alfred Hitchcock. So that. Actually gives this sequel. The advantage. And what also really helps with its with this film it is its script 
the script is written by Tom Holland, who would later on go on to direct Child's Play. And then before he did Child's Play, he did the original Fright Night. And both both those movies I also like, but I don't think that he wrote both of them. So yeah, um, the script is fantastic. Um, I can't remember, was it just him who wrote the script? Yep. Just him. Wow. Now, if he wrote Fright Night, or if he wrote any other horror movies that, that I have seen of his, I would say that this is the best one. What... I like about this sequel is that, you know, it's really, really hard after Psycho 1 to make Norman Bates sympathetic. That's really hard to pull off. But, be, but because of the script and because of the performance from Anthony Perkins, it actually works. They made you feel sympathy for a, for a murderer. That's pretty hard to pull off, and you know, I have to give a major, major props for that. And what I also like is all of like the mystery behind and like the plot, like like that you do not know as to you know as if like as a Norman really did kill those people. And spoilers, but at around the end, they think that the one like who killed everybody like was uh was uh crap what's that girl's name from psycho one uh loomis uh they think that it was like her daughter and all that but it was just a misunderstanding you see i like all that mystery and I liked how it made you guess, okay, it, is it really Norman? Is it really Loomis? Is it really Loomis' daughter? I really, really dug that a lot. And the cinematography by Dean Condy was fantastic. Some of... This just had some of just the most unique shots, but also... There also were some, some shots, which, which I kind of noticed, which paid homage to the original, but yet, when, when, they, did, when, when they did those homages, it wasn't like they were doing, you know, the 98 Psycho, and just literally the same thing. Look. At first, I always wondered, okay, in, right at the beginning of the movie, they show the shower scene from the original. I always wondered why. I think I may have a reason, but this is but this is just my idea. I think that they put it there as to as to remind you as to what Norman has done in the past. Because I think that because I think that by them by by you re reminding you, it works for the context of the plot as to well, whether or not, you know, did he really change from his past or not? The only real complaint I can have is, I guess, the actress who played Loomis' daughter. She was just okay, just sometimes her scream just felt really off. Originally I heard that they wanted Jamie Lee Curtis, and honestly I would have been so much happier if they got her instead. And, and it also would have been perfect because she is Jenna Lee's daughter. But hey, the girl with the guy was okay, and I just think that you know, she could have done better. But all in all, guys, this is a very, very satisfying sequel. If you have not seen Psycho 2, check it out. I highly, highly recommend it.
care, guys.